whenever it's required. Please give the warmest of welcomes to Sir Eric Pickles. Shalom, my friends. Now, I've been a member of the House of Commons for a good few years, uh, nearly 25 years, but I've been a friend of Israel for even longer. And I have a clear message for those who sought to silence us. We will not be bound. We will not be broken. We will not be bullied. We will speak out against injustice and we will defend democracy. The hate mongers, the ones that spit out the lies, must never be allowed to think that their chants and their violence can drown out the legitimacy of the freedom of Israel. We've just undergone um, a week in which it was sought to portray Israel as an apartheid state. Israel, the only functioning democracy in a troubled reason. Israel, where 20% of the population are Arabs, 1.7 million people who enjoy full citizens and voting rights. Israel, a country with two languages, Hebrew and Arabic, reflected in road signs and mutual respect. Israel values freedom of speech and allows people from all backgrounds and political ideologies to express themselves without any fear. Opponents of Zionism, of the State of Israel and freedom of speech are permitted to form political organizations within Israel. Israel's media is vibrant, independent, and fully and freely criticizes government policy. And the country also boasts an active uh, civic society which, which permits demonstrations very widely. You know that in terms of the Arab minority population, there are currently 17 Israeli Arab members in a 120 member Knesset. Universities and hospitals all across Israel are integrated with Israeli Arabs and Jewish Israelis studying and being treated side by side. Racial discrimination is against the law with Israeli Arabs serving as heads of hospital departments, university professors, senior police officers, uh, working in the army, and there's an Arab judge on the country's Supreme Court. It's a little surprising then that 77% of Israeli Arabs responded to a poll by Harvard University a few years ago, stating that they preferred living in Israel to any other country in the world. And Israeli society can perhaps be demonstrated by its treatment of the Christian minority. All over the region, Christians face persecution and death. Numbers are falling at, uh, at an enormous rate. A little over a decade ago or so, Christians made up 14% of the region. Now it's fallen to 4%. In Gaza, it's even more dramatic, down from 15% to just 2%. The BDS movement seeks to damage not only Israel's economy, but the United Kingdom's economy. There is, of course, cooperation between our two governments on defense, that shouldn't surprise us. Israel is a valued uh, ally in the region. But there are also great partnerships in high tech, in biotech, in medicines. If the BDS were to be successful, their first victim would be the National Health Service. One in seven of all our prescriptions 
are from an Israeli pattern. There's valuable work taking place between Israel and the United Kingdom on the study, the causes of Alzheimer's disease, on heart disease, and people will be materially worse off. But in a way, the BDS have already claimed their first scalps, their first injuries, and that's those hundreds of Palestinians who've been made redundant because of the pressure that... The, yes, because of the pressure that BDS has put upon BDS will tell you it's a price worth paying. But I think a partnership between Palestinians and Israelis is something that we should celebrate rather than seek to stamp out. But I'm not in any way surprised by this because we, uh, as uh, the uh, chair of Labour Friends uh, of, um, uh, of Israel said uh, very powerfully um, a little while ago that demonising uh, Israel does not bring peace process any closer whatsoever. Nor I think are we fooled by the motives that those who seek to denigrate Israel this is thinly disguised anti-Semitism. The growth in anti-Semitism in Europe is truly frightening. But I say this clearly. The British government, the British political parties, are absolutely determined to stand shoulder to shoulder with our Jewish communities in the United Kingdom. Because a strong and dynamic Jewish community is fundamentally part of the British identity. So my friend, I wish you well. I wish you prosperity. But above all, I wish you a strong and Feral voice to stand out against oppression and those that seek to silence you. Thank you very much indeed.